A success is earned one day at a time. Every day you lift your head up off the pillow. You're going to decide whether that day you are a success or whether you are a failure. You're either moving forward or you're falling behind. It is one decision at a time. It is one phone call at a time. You know the phone call you didn't want to make? The one that makes you a little nervous, makes your palms sweaty? Every one of those phone calls is determining whether you will be a success. One meeting at a time. Remember Donald Trump said yesterday, the meeting he didn't want to go to? That one meeting changed his entire future. Every single meeting you decide to or decide not to go to determines your future. There's only one thing that will determine whether at the end of a long life you end up lonely, despondent, and broke, or you end up in a marriage of 50 plus years of incredible intimacy and great bliss. Only one thing will determine whether you get to send your children to the greatest universities in the world, or no matter what it is that they qualified for, they can't go because you can't afford it. Only one thing will determine whether you get to donate to your charity to your greatest heart's content, whether you get to travel the world in fantastic luxury. Your whole life comes down to one thing. What's the one thing? It all comes down to choices. Right now, your whole life is nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. Right now, your waistline is nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. The size of your business, your bank account, the intimacy of the relationships in your life are all just an outcome of the compounded choices you've made up to this point. So if we're going to change the trajectory of your life starting today, starting right now, we've got to go to where it, the control factor of it all begins and it all begins with choices. What choices? Because we're presented with hundreds of choices all day throughout the day. What choices matter the most? Anybody here ever been bitten by an elephant? Well, what about mosquitoes? Anybody ever been bitten by a mosquito? Bill Gates says this is the most deadly animal on the planet for the human species. And it's also one of the smallest. See, nature provides clues. It's the little things in life that will bite you and kill you. So is it true about your choices. When you take a look at the seven billion people on the planet, a question I'm asked a lot is, we only get to pick 12 people to be on the cover of Success Magazine out of 7 billion. And I'm asked, what do these guys do to become so successful? What separated them from everybody else? Well, let me tell you what they did not do because this is what everybody thinks they did to get to the cover of Success Magazine. Success is not a result of some heroic feat. Nobody you see on the cover of Success Magazine did anything heroic. It is not because of some grand act of bravery. You know, you do not leap and hope that the net appears. <laughs> Don't do that. That ends in calamity. And they didn't perform any quantum leap. It wasn't just right place, right time, as Trump said yesterday. Yes, luck plays a part, but it only plays a part after you've worked your butt off. So it wasn't any grand act of luck either. Success is, if you're looking for the answer of what caused these people to get on the cover of Success Magazine, success is a result of small, seemingly insignificant, moment-to-moment -moment choices. The only thing that separates them from you is that accumulated compound effect of those little choices that created dramatic differences in results. Small little choices like at lunch, you're given a menu. And what is the menu? It's just a series of choices, right? Do you pick the hamburger and fries or do you pick the salad? Now you're thinking, that doesn't seem like that big of a choice. I'm telling you, it is. Small little choices like at the end of a long hard day, do you stop by the gym and put in a workout? Or do you rush home to catch your favorite sitcom? Small little choices like, in the heat of an argument with your spouse, do you walk out of the room and say, I'm not gonna deal with this? 
Or do you spin on your heels, say you're sorry, and choose to make a moment of magic? Small little choices like, in a networking event, do you walk across the room and introduce yourself to that person you're a little bit afraid to do so? Or do you hunker down in fear one more time? Small little choices like, at the end of a long day, do you put in a few more phone calls or do you just simply call it a day? You see, these small choices add up to big, gargantuan differences in results. Let me give you a, a, a reference point in which to associate this with. If I were to give you a choice of a single cent, a single penny, that doubles every day for 31 days, or three million in euro right now, right here today, how many people take the three million in euro? Okay. Well, let's say that you were paying attention and you said, small things add up to big results. I better pick the small thing. There's a clue there. And let's say that you pick the penny, okay? But your neighbor, your neighbor at home, picked the three million euro in cash. So now we're gonna start proceeding in life. We get five days down the road and your measly penny is worth 16 cents, okay? While your neighbor has three million dollars in cash and you can hear the parties going on next door, right? When you get 10 days down the road, your penny has become five euro and 12 cents. Not enough for a happy meal at McDonald's, right? But your neighbor is drinking champagne, eating caviar, having Robin Leach over for dinner, right? Now we get 20 days down the road and your penny is still 5,242 euro and they've got 3 million euro in cash and partying like a rock star. It's not until we get to day 31 that we see the dramatic outcome of this compounding pity where your penny is turned into 10 million, 737,000 against their paltry 3 million. Now, what you need to know about this is, this is the reason why Einstein called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. Because the, the, the math between day one and day two is exactly the same math between day 30 and day 31. Nothing's different. You just see the compound effect of it. And this is why I'm telling you right now this morning, compound choices are the eighth wonder of the success world. Because the same choice you make between day one and day two is exactly the same simple, small, easy choice at day 30 to day 31. But the outcome of those choices are dramatically different. Small, seemingly insignificant, positive choices create extraordinary results. So now if all of this seems rather easy, why is it that people still fail and still make poor choices? Well, here's what I wanna warn you of. There's four traps that you will face. Outside of this conference hall, these traps are on the ground. At home, these traps are on the ground. At the office, at the shopping center, these traps are on the ground. So I wanna point them out to you so that you can go, whoa, I gotta step around that. Because people with good intention step into these traps and then they get derailed and then they wonder why they end up with no results and so frustrated. So here's the first one. At the moment that you're making a choice, the consequences, the outcomes, or the results are invisible. It doesn't look like it's having any impact whatsoever. So you can get faked out. But I promise you, I could change your choices like that if I had the power to take the space-time continuum and collapse it. Meaning, if you made a choice right now and I took the space-time continuum of that choice 15, 20 years out and I collapsed it and showed you exactly what the outcome was, I promise you you'd make a different choice. For instance, let's say at lunch, you did pick the hamburger and fries and upon the first bite, your chest explodes and you drop to the ground in a heart attack. You'd probably lose the taste of hamburger really, really quick. One bite at a time, simple as that. Or let's just say, you know, you're out with your girlfriends, you didn't smoke, but they're encouraging you like, I'll oh, have a smoke and 
you try it and you're like, ah, you know, I put it down. That doesn't seem so bad. I don't know what everybody's talking about. But let's say I could take the space-time continuum of 20, 30, 40 years and I could take your future self to talk to your current self about that choice. What would you say? Don't smoke another cigarette. But see, for, for decades, for years and years and years, it didn't look like anything was happening. It didn't look like anything was happening. And it wasn't until the last four or five years when the dramatic outcome of those choices made itself known. Or let's just say, you know, you promised your spouse that you'd never go to bed angry. But tonight you're like, I just don't want to deal with this tonight. We'll talk about it in the morning. And you go and sleep in the guest bedroom. And I show you what that single choice looks like. And the next morning, you wake up to divorce papers and you got to look your little girl in the eye and explain why you couldn't make a different choice. You see, every single one of these choices has what you can also call a butterfly effect. Y'all heard of the butterfly effect? Butterfly flaps its wings one part of the planet and on the other side of the planet, there's a tsunami. This is what I'm telling you. One little itty bitty choice over here 10, 15 years later, and there's a tsunami in your life, either positive or negative. So what do you do about this? Okay, what do you do about each of these positive choices you're now going to take? Well, the first thing you need to do is to just have patience. Even though you don't see the results in the moment, you have to know that the compound effect has been ignited. And every choice you make ignites it and fuels it and it will stretch itself out over 10 15 20 years before it reveals its results to you second trap when you start to change the trajectory of your life that change is subtle and very very deceptive for instance let's say that um, you're on a plane in los angeles california and that plane is headed towards laguardia airport in new york and while that plane is on the tarmac, its nose is pointed directly at LaGuardia. If the nose of that plane is off by only one degree, by the time that plane, one degree off, flies across the United States, it'll be 150 miles or 240 kilometers off its intended target, two states away. So here's what happens, okay? Here's what happens in people's lives. There one day, going along 10 15 20 years down the road they end up they end up looking at themselves in the mirror going <laughs> what happened how did i get so fat how did i end up divorced this is the person i said was the love of my life how did i end up estranged from the people i said were most important to me in my life look here's the reality you might not have done anything really bad you might have only been one degree off and that one degree traveled over 10 15 20 years and now you're 150 miles or 240 kilometers off your intended target so what do you do about this well a plane has what's called a gyroscope in the nose so it keeps itself on track so no matter what happens weather traffic it's redirected the computer keeps locking on to its intended target. So it can fly all the way across the country and then hit the exact runway it wants to over on the other side of the continent because it has a gyroscope. So I'm gonna show you a gyroscope you can use for your life before we finish up here. But I have to warn you, life on the ground looks a little bit more like this. Standing atop a double black diamond ski run. And let's say the goal at the bottom of the hill is uh, a comfy chair, warm fire, and a cup of hot cocoa, okay? And if you just run right at it, what's gonna happen? Yeah, it's gonna get ugly, right? So what happens is you start off and then you get hit by a mogul. And the mogul just pushes you over in this direction. Now, a lot of people end up just skiing off the mountain, right? Instead, you have to adjust. And you ski a little bit and you get hit by another mogul. And you're like, I see my goal, I have to adjust. So what I'm telling you is, you will be off track, often. But the key is what? 
get back on track. And the more time you spend off track, you'll spend more time coming back to the track. The difference between how long it takes for you to get from the top to the bottom will depend on how much time you spend off track. So the key is to get back on track. Here's the third trap, immediate gratification. And as a Western civilization, we are addicted to immediate gratification. We're trying to pleasure ourselves at every single moment. So let's say at the end of a nice meal, you're presented with a choice. Grandma's warm chocolate cake or a glass of water. What are you gonna choose? Well, what do you get if you choose the chocolate cake? Joy. You get joy, you get like this oral sensation of epic proportion, that's what you get. What do you get if you choose the glass of water? Nothing. Right here, this is the biggest problem you will have in making good choices. Because if you make a poor choice, you're rewarded. If you make a good choice, you get nothing. And that is hard for our emotional and psychological selves to take. So what you're doing all day is you're walking through this minefield of solicitations on your immediate gratification. And your ability to have self-control and to withstand these solicitations is going to come down to a couple of factors. This is the great paradox that you have to understand. What gives you short-term pain? Having the glass of water, making the call you don't want to go to, you want to call, going to the meeting you didn't want to go to, creates long-term pleasure. On the other side of this, what creates short-term pain? Going to the gym, saying you're sorry, creates long-term pleasure. In life, you will suffer one of two pains. The pain of discipline, or the pain of regret. And as Jim put it, he said, the pain of discipline weighs ounces. Picking up the phone, going to the meeting, saying you're sorry. But the pain of regret weighs tons. Bankruptcy, divorce, heartache, loneliness. So as you're out there making your choices, ask yourself, pain of discipline or pain of regret? And that'll help you along a little bit. When I asked Oprah about this, about how she tried to control some of her choices, she says, you know, I realized that if I, if I made a good choice, I didn't get anything. I didn't get to have the chocolate cake, right? She said, so I decided that instead what I did is I got a miracle, okay? So at least I felt like I got a miracle. She says, first of all, if I didn't choose the chocolate cake, it's a miracle. <laughs> And she says, my whole goal throughout the day was to make miracles. And at the end of the day, I would just add up, how many miracles did I make today? Meaning, how many positive choices that I didn't want to make, but I made anyway, did I make today? And if you start taking an account of when you, when you choose short-term discipline versus long-term regret, then you'll be on the right track. The last trap is this. What's easy to do, and everything I've talked to you about here is easy to do. The actual process of success is easy to do. Emotionally, it's very difficult, but the process is easy to do. It's easy to eat an apple a day, walk around the block for your good health, say you're sorry, make a moment of magic, pick up the phone and make phone calls, write thank you letters, drink glasses of water. Oh, that's easy. That's the problem. It's also easy not to do. Because it's so easy, it's easily disregarded. You'll sit there and go, ah, and that's no big deal. And you won't do the easy things. And because you won't do the easy things, life will end up very hard for you. So realize, there's a little bit of a trick in what's easy to do is the fact that it's also easy not to do. So I have a question for this intelligent audience. What do successful people and unsuccessful people have in common? Here's what they have in common, okay? They both hate to do what it takes to be successful. Successful people just do it anyway. I, you know, Muhammad Ali, the great world champion boxing, star, right? 
He said, I hated every early morning workout I ever had in my entire career, but I loved being world champion. You see, you don't have to like making prospecting calls. You don't have to like coming to the meeting. You don't have to like sitting here in the front row and agreeing with the speaker so that you're setting the example for everybody else. You don't have to like any of it, but you have to do it anyway. And when you do, you will separate yourself from everyone else. So get over the fact that you need to like it, okay? If we've got choices locked down, okay, I'm gonna start making new choices. What happens has to happen after that? What has to happen after that is you gotta get your butt off the couch, go out the front door and make something happen. Behavior or action has to follow choices. Here's the biggest problem about your choices. 95% of the choices you make are unconscious. You're not even making a choice about it. You're literally sleepwalking through your day. Most of our behavior that we've developed over time are un or is unconscious to us. So the first thing that we need to do to change your behavior is we got to bring your awareness back to the behavior that you need to change. So I'll tell you when I first learned this. When I was 20 years of age, I got into the real estate business. And the first year in business, I did really well. And I'm meeting with my CPA, the accountant, to figure out my taxes. And he's pushing all these buttons and the tape's going like this. And he's giggling, laughing, having a good old time while I'm sitting there waiting for his ultimate results. And at the end, he says, congratulations, son. You owe over $100,000 in taxes. I said, I'm only 20 years old, right? He's like, I'm like, oh, I, I don't have $100,000 just lying around. He's like, why? You earned several times that. Of course you set aside the money to pay your taxes. And I said, does this stupefied look indicate that I've saved the $100,000? And that's when he did a great favor. He pushed himself from his desk. He stood up and he pointed his finger at me and he said, son, You've got to stop it. I've seen this a hundred times. You keep on this, continue, this continued behavior and you will dig your financial grave with your own wallet. You've got to get a grip. And then he put his finger on what has become the most powerful personal development tool I've ever discovered. He put his finger on a 50 cent notepad and he slid it across the desk. And he said, son, I want you to write down every single penny you spend for the next 30 days. He said, I don't care if it's $2,000 for a new suit. You buy a pack of gum at the convenience store. You put 50 cents of air in your tires. You buy a round of drinks for your buddies. Everything goes on that notepad. And I said, yes, sir. And it wasn't but a week, week and a half after writing down everything that I was spending and then looking at it and went, oh my God, how money had just been pouring out of my pockets without me even knowing it. So I went from, earning a lot of money to being worth a lot of money on the same amount of money because I changed my behavior and I didn't even know that my behavior was out of whack. So whatever you want to change, you want to change your diet, start writing down everything you put into your face. You want to change your relationship with your spouse, figure out what her or his love language is and every time you do that, write it down. I'm telling you, you'll get an acute idea of exactly how your behavior has been off track and exactly what it takes to get it back on track. So awareness is the first step of change. Now, behavior repeated become habits. Now I'm telling you, this is the key point. Choices that you start acting on ultimately need to become habits. Your habits will determine your life and lifestyle. If I watch you for a couple of few days and I notice your habits, I can guess your bank account within a few euro. I can predict your future. I can tell you the kind of relationships you have now and the kind of relationships you will have later when I observe your habits because habits are the expressions of who we are and how we live and they determine all your results. So this is ultimately what we want to change is changing your habits. Now, a habit is something when you repeat a behavior, you develop inside your brain what's called a neurosignature, or let's just make it less technical. Your brain is like gray matter, totally malleable, 
okay? You come into this world with no habits, none. You develop them over time with your repeated behavior. And it develops what's called a brain groove. And once you have that brain groove, once it's deep enough, now you can perform that act without ever having to think about it. That's how you can, 95% of your behavior becomes unconscious. And these habits, they start out like cobwebs and they become thick as cables. Now, the hard reality about changing your habits are good habits. They're hard to create, but easy to lose. You go on a two week vacation and don't run or work out, it's gonna be really hard to start back up again when you get home. The other side of this equation is bad habits are easy to create and hard to lose. You on a vacation with a friend who has this particular drink they like and you start drinking it and then you come home and you're still drinking it and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I got this new habit that I never even wanted and it's hard to break. What happens here is when you try to break one of the neurosignatures in your brain of a bad habit, it's as difficult as if you have substance abuse, drugs and alcohol that you're trying to go through withdrawals to get over. As physical, emotional, and psychological, it'll be as painful as that. And ultimately, it'll take about 300 repetitions of not doing the previous bad habit and doing the new good habit so that this one weakens and this one strengthens. Now that you know it's not gonna be easy and how long you've gotta sustain a new habit, at least you won't get disillusioned, okay? And the reality is, is that willpower will not work. Why is it that we have the biggest diet industry in the history of humanity, and yet as a species, we are more fat than we've ever been in the history of humanity? How can those two things exist simultaneously? And the reason is, they all rely on willpower, and willpower will not work. So instead, what I want to encourage you to find is what's called why power. So imagine I took up a 300-foot steel beam and I laid it across the concrete floor here. And I said, hey, if you just walk on top of the beam from one side to the other, at the other I'll give you 20 euro for walking on top of it. How many people would do it? Yeah, easy 20 euro, no big deal. But what if I took that 300-foot steel beam and I put it atop two 100-story buildings? And now I said, if you walk on top of the beam from one side to the other, I'll give you 20 euro. How many people would do it now? But what if on the other building is your child and the building is on fire and if you don't go across that beam, they will perish and die right before your eyes. How many people will go across that beam now? Now, I, I just want you to observe something here, okay? The first time I asked you, you said, no way, no how, the risk, the danger is too great. Why would I ever do that? The second time I asked you, you shot your hand up and I didn't even offer you 20 euro. The difference was the reason why to do it. Here's what I want you to get. When your reason why is urgent enough, important enough, critical enough, where you have a white, hot, burning desire to get to the other side, no danger, no risk, nothing can stop you. In order for you to achieve the kind of goals that you're capable of achieving, what's stopping you is you don't have enough reasons that are urgent, powerful, and compelling enough to have you come overcome any danger, risk, or fear that you've got to getting there. And you will need this why power to sustain the changing of your habits. Now I want to give you one last strategy. I get asked all the time after this, is there any way to speed this up a little bit? And the reality is time has to take its course. But there is one strategy that can accelerate your success, okay? That can get you far beyond the pack, to have you break out from the peloton, so to speak. And here's what it is. I learned it when I first got into real estate. I went to a seminar. It's kind of a theme there. And I was the only guy that asked the lecturer to lunch. And so we went to lunch 
and I sat down with them and I'm only 20 years of age right now, okay? And I'm in the real estate business and just getting started. And I said, tell me what I gotta do to be successful. I says, I'm willing to do anything. He says, are you really, really willing to do anything? I said, I'm willing to do anything. He says, then I'm gonna give you the ultimate key to your success. I'm like, I'm ready. He said, go fail. I said, what do you, what do you mean go fail? He says, yeah, go fail fast, go fail a lot, and go fail really big. And I thought, man, isn't the whole idea of success avoiding failure? And he said, no, 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 it's quite the opposite. The key to your success is your failure. And then he gave me this quote from Thomas Watson, who used to be the president of IBM, where he said, your key to success is massive failure. Now, don't just hear that as some motivational line. Let that marinate on your brain a little bit. The key to success is massive failure. What if that's true? Now, based on the look on your faces, same look I had on my face, okay? So he explained this to me a little bit. He took a cocktail napkin and he drew out this analogy. He said, look, on one side of the pendulum is joy, love, happiness, and success. The other side is pain, rejection, sadness, and failure. He says, look, if, if you just stand still, you won't experience any pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat, but you won't experience any joy, love, happiness, and success either. He says, you, you know, you can't live under a bridge. Eventually, you gotta go and mix amongst people. So what ends up happening is, is people are only willing to experience so much rejection and so much pain and so much defeat, and so they only experience so much joy, so much love, and they end up just operating in what is called this comfort zone. And if anything is outside that comfort zone, they're like, oh, no, no. And they just stay right here in this comfort zone. But they complain, why don't I have more success? Why don't I have more love? Why don't I have more happiness in my life? He said, so you can't push the pendulum on the side of success. He said, the only side of the pendulum you can control is the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat. So your job is to go push the pendulum as high, as wide, and as fast as you can on the side of pain, rejection, sadness, and defeat. And he says, I promise you, it'll swing in equal proportion on the other side. Now, even to this day, even to this day, if I get to the end of the month and I've not had some embarrassing defeat, rejection, or failure, I'm mad at myself. Why? because I want more success than I have right now. Well, what is the key to that? More failure. So all you cushy, comfy, successful circle of champions, now's the time to push that pendulum even higher and wider. More failure, more defeat, more rejection. I want you to change your mindset about failure, about rejection, about defeat. I want you to learn to love it. You see, when you turn fear into fun, fear no longer has a grip on you. The only thing stopping you from being more successful, from realizing your potential, because your potential is so much greater than your current life, the only thing stopping you is fear. It's fear. And when you turn fear into fun, you release that potential. You are unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. Because here's what happens. What you resist persists. What you step into dissipates. Once you step into the thing you once feared, it dissipates. And now you can finally live up to the potential that you, you are been given by God but are not living as you were meant to live. At the end of every day, that's the question I ask myself. Did I do something today that scared me? Because if I did, I push that pendulum just a little bit and I'm going to see the reward on the other side of that swing.